morning or good evening to you whenever you're watching this. Uh, my name is Father Sam Lasada. This is our Mass for this Sunday, the 15th Sunday of Ordinary Time. I'm doing this from the Friary Chapel in our Friary at the Mission. And as you know, we have to be under quarantine because one of our friars have been tested, has been tested positive for COVID-19. So we ask you to pray for our community as we await our test results and as uh, our prior is getting better too. So I just want to let you know to make to make sure that you know even though we are separated physically, that the love of God, that the grace of God knows no boundaries, that we are still united spiritually. That no matter where we are, no matter where you are, we are still celebrating this mass together. So don't worry about being separated for now. Hopefully we get can get together soon, but wherever you are, God's love, God, our communion with each other can go to anything, any boundaries, any space, any time. So with that, I invite you to join the celebration of Mass. Sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have created this sin in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, 
receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who show the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may return to their right path. Give all who for the faith they profess are accounted Christians the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ and to strive after all that does his honor. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, just as the heavens, the rain and snow come down and do not return there till they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the one who sows and bread to the one who eats. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. My word shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. The word of the Lord. And speak to God.
a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I consider the suffering of this present time are as nothing compared with the glory to be revealed for us. For creation awaits with eager expectation the revelation of the children of God. For creation was made subject to futility, not of its own accord, but because of the one who subjected it. We hope that creation itself will be set free from its slavery to corruption and share in the glorious freedom of the children of God. We know that all creation is growing in labor pains even until now. And not only that, but we ourselves who have the first, first fruits of the Spirit. We also groan within ourselves as we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The seed is the word of God, Christ is the soul. All who come to him will have life for Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. On that day Jesus went out of the house and sat down by the sea. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat down and the whole crowd stood along the shore. And he spoke to them at length in parables, saying, A sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seed fell on the path, and birds came and added up. Some fell on rocky ground where it had little soil. It sprang up at once because the soil was not deep, and when the sun rose, it was scorched, and it withered for lack of roots. Some seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it. But some seed fell on rich soil and produced fruit, a hundred, or sixty, or thirty-fold. Whoever has ears ought to hear. The disciples approached him and said, Why do you speak to them in parables? He said to them in reply, because knowledge of the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven has been granted to you, but to them it has not been granted. To anyone who has, more will be given, and he will grow rich. From anyone, anyone who has not, even what he has will be taken away. This is why I speak to them in parables, because they look, but do not see, and hear, but do not listen or understand. Isaiah's prophecy is fulfilled in them, which says, You shall indeed hear, but not understand. You shall indeed look, but never see. Gross is the heart of this people. They will hardly hear with their ears. They have closed their eyes, lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears, and understand with their hearts and be converted. And I heal them. But blessed are your eyes because they see your ears because they hear. Amen, I say to you, many prophets and righteous people long to see what you see but did not see it, and to hear what you hear but did not hear it. Hear then the parable of the sower. The seed sown on the path is the one who hears the word of the kingdom without understanding it, and the evil one comes and steals away what was sown in his heart. The seed sown on rocky ground is the one who hears the word and receives it at once with joy. But he has no root and lasts only for a time. When some tribulation and persecution comes because of the word, he immediately falls away. The seed sown among thorns is the one who hears the word. 
But then worldly anxiety and the lure of riches choke the word and it bears no fruit. But the seed sown on rich soil is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields a hundred or sixty or thirtyfold. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. It doesn't make sense. God is such a terrible sower. Isn't he? He's like a foolish farmer. When we follow Jesus' parable that God is like a sower and God's word are like the seeds, then what a terrible sower God is. A good sower will never waste good seeds like that. What was God thinking? It doesn't make sense. If God knows what's inside each person's heart, then why is he wasting his energy or his time? Why bother sending his word to those who can understand it and can easily be swayed by the evil one, like that seed sown on the path? Doesn't make sense. Why bother sending the word to those who have no root and fall easily when tribulation or persecution comes, like the seed sown on rocky ground? Doesn't make sense. Why bother sending the word to those who are anxious and easily distracted by the lure of riches like that seed sown among thorns? That's it. Make sense. And why indeed bother sending his only begotten son to a people who would ultimately kill him and persecute his followers? It really doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense because if it's up to us, we would look for an option that gives us the maximum return of investment, the lowest risk, or the highest gain for the least effort, the largest profit for the lowest cost. That's how the world operates. That's how we operate. To do otherwise would be foolish. If God wants to make it effective and efficient, then He should have sent His word only to those people who will understand it and bear fruit, like the seed sown on rich soil. But where do we find those people? Is it us? Is it like you and me who come to church regularly? Is it only those who pray the rosary every day, or read the Bible every day, or serve at the soup kitchen every day? truth is all these characterizations that Jesus gives us are us at different points in our life. At times we hear God's word and we bear fruit. Other times we let fear take over. We let greed take over. And we choose to ignore God's word. None of us is perfect. None of us can claim to be consistently that rich soil. But ultimately, we are not destined by God to be rocky ground or filled with thorns. As St. Paul says in the second reading, God's, God hopes that we, with all of creation, will be set free from slavery to corruption and share in the glorious freedom of the children of God. So the task for you and me is to help one another understand God's Word, to understand it better so we can all bear fruit by implementing it in our lives. And, as St. Paul says, it's not just us humanity, but we need to help the whole created world, a world that is groaning in labor pain because of all the destruction and the corruption caused by human greed. Well, Francis, in his encyclical Laudato Si, says that what St. Francis of Assisi called lovingly our sister Mother Earth now cries out to us because of the harm we have inflicted on her by our irresponsible use and abuse of the goods with which God has endowed her. God's word, 
and God's grace should permeate all of us and all of creation, just like the rain and the snow that the prophet Isaiah talks about in the first reading. It waters the earth. It makes it fertile and fruitful. It gives nourishment. And then return to God, not void, but having done God's will. We are all in this journey together, with all creation, back to our Creator. This journey back to God, according to the great Franciscan theologians in Buenaventure, who, by the way, whose, uh, whose feast we will celebrate on the 15th this coming week, that this journey back to God is only possible because of the grace we receive from Christ. Through Christ, we come from God. Through Christ, we return to God. And that goes for all of us. The rich soil, the path, the rocky ground, the thorny place. So thank God that God doesn't think like we do. Because if He did, then we'd be screwed. In Matthew chapter 5, Jesus says that God makes the sun rise on the evil and the good. And God sends the rain to the just and the unjust. This shows the immensity of God's love for all of us. God's love is so illogical, so wild and reckless, that God puts no limit, no boundaries, no condition on who can receive God's grace. So thank God that God doesn't make sense. We now profess our faith by reciting the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven, heaven and earth, of all, all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten the Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was the incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and we came in. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Yeah, we now humbly offer our petitions, our prayers for us and for the world. For the church, that we may spread the hopeful and exciting message of the gospel to both, of the, both our words and deeds, so that others may encounter the God who loves them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our, our prayer. prayer. For work leaders, that they will cultivate a culture of peace, working together to bring an end to war and violence. We pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. For all who work the land, that they be inspired by today's word of God and be blessed in their labors. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish community, that we may seek ways to reach out in love to those who are alone. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish lectors, that they will be strengthened in their love for God's Word and continue to treasure it in their hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions of the friars of the province, living and deceased, for the sick, particularly those with COVID-19, for the dying and the grieving, and for those who have died this week, that they may enjoy eternal peace with God our Father. And for Joe Stephen Schultz, Jack and Ginger Pereira, Emmanuel Patelezio Tuise, Joyce King, Dorothy and Four Sirius, who we especially remember at this month. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, your dominion is over all the earth. By the power of your Spirit, answer the prayers that we make in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look upon the offerings of the church, O Lord, as she makes her prayer to you, and grant that, when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit, lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation 
always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed us in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder. To rule in your name over all you have made and, and forever praise you in your mighty words to Christ our Lord. And so, as with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Robert, our Bishop, John, his assistant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him and with Him and in Him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. command and formed by divine teaching we dare to say 
our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Just so that you know that even though we are separated, that we are united with each other by praying for one another. And if you're watching this by yourself, know that we are still in communion with each other. If you're watching this with someone else, then this is the time to offer each other the sign of peace. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be free.
consume these gifts, we pray, O oh Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, its saving effects upon us may grow through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just want to say thanks to Brother Rufino, who helped us with music and reading, Brother Tito also with manning the camera right now, behind the camera, and also reading. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.